Z. It is in, it is it was in there. All right, who is uh who's who's in here? Can you guys uh put something in the comments so I know who's here? It looks like there's three of us total. Uh, those three are. No, now there's only one. Somebody came and left. Yeah, now there's two. <laughs> All right, GZ one of one. Uh, that's PJ. Who else is here? Who else? Uh, whoever that other person is, would you mind introducing yourself in the comments? Had a whole bunch of technical difficulties today. No. Don't want to introduce yourself. It's all right if you don't. I mean, all right. Well, um, as I'm um, getting kind of set up here, obviously, I'm sorry. Oh, we got a, somewhat another person who's in here um had a bunch of uh technical difficulties uh when we first got started so i don't know if that um i don't know if that created a oh i got two different live streams going on here yeah i had a bunch of a whole bunch of problems um so um I, everything got started a little late and then obviously uh all kinds of crazy stuff happened with the weather so that threw me off a little bit too. Um, but uh, I'm going to give it just a few more uh, minutes here, uh, just in case anybody else is trying to get in before we go ahead and jump into um, before we go ahead and jump into the lesson tonight. And then, uh, well, I guess I'll just wait. want to wait till some more people get in before I do any announcements or anything like that. I still, I'm this other mystery person is, uh, is, uh, it's kind of, it's weird. I don't know who it is. If you just got here, hi, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, we're, uh, I was hoping everybody would, um, announce themselves in the chat. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of something that I should say. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, let us know who you are before we get started. Go ahead and know who I'm talking to as I'm talking. Um, it's me, PJ, and one other person. I don't know who that other person is. It's me, PJ, and somebody else. I decided to go close the door because um, PJ and I are actually in the same house, so um, I don't want his his sound bouncing off of mine or mine bouncing off of uh, his, and then that like kind of messing up the. Uh, the the flow of everything so uh, okay um all right well we've got there's there's th between three and possibly four uh of us total 
because I don't know who that other person is or who just jumped on. But we're going to go ahead and um, get started. First of all, I want to say thanks, everybody, for um, for uh, being here tonight. I know it's kind of a, a weird setup, and uh, it's not ideal, obviously. But the at the end of the day, like everybody is kind of isolated and stuck in um, their houses right now. And it can be challenging doing that like on your own or just like, you know, the monotony of doing it over and over again. Um, the same thing or feeling like you're doing the same thing over and over again. So um, wanted to break it up, obviously, by um, doing a little uh, lesson tonight and then hopefully even some small groups later on with Zoom. So before we get started, I do want to start by asking the question of what you had for breakfast today and what time you think you had breakfast all right what what you had for breakfast today and what time you think you had breakfast today go ahead and type that into um the chat i want to know uh what time you had breakfast and um what you had so what you had what time you had it i'm trying to think i know i had uh and it was probably about what time was it uh, I would say it was probably this time. All right. Um, so, uh, again, if you just got here, I saw somebody else come in really, uh, just a second ago. Uh, we're talking about what we had for breakfast and, uh, what time you think you had it. Uh, I had, uh, Cheerios. They were honey nut Cheerios cause I don't mess with anything but honey nut Cheerios. And I think that I had them at 10 a.m. I think that's what time I had the, the Honey Nut Cheerios. So uh, Honey Nut Cheerios at 10 a.m. I don't know if anybody else uh, has breakfast, what time they had it, what they had. I'd be interested in hearing uh, what you had for breakfast. There's kind of a reason why I'm doing this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it just a few more seconds and then I'll just continue on if nobody, um, if nobody goes ahead and puts anything in there. But I'm just interested. You know, obviously people are at home. Um, and, uh, it, your, your normal routine is thrown off. So I'm just wondering like, uh, number one, what you had for breakfast specifically, and then kind of what time you had it, because that lets me know how your routine has been, um, affected or impacted by, uh, you know, all of the, the stuff that's going on basically. So, uh, PJ said honey bunches of oats. At 9.30. 9.30. That's not a bad time to have breakfast. That's that's probably pretty normal, actually, I guess. For most people. I guess, actually, for you, it's not because school, you're usually out of the house by, like, 6.30. And um, school is, like, you know, every Wednesday. So you wouldn't have had breakfast normally. The point is that I think I've said this before, that, like, breakfast, I think, is normally associated with, like, something that happens in the morning. So um, you don't eat like breakfast at night, but breakfast actually is a combination of two words. It's break fast. And essentially what you're doing when you go to bed every night is you're fasting all night long. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're breaking that, uh, fast from breakfast. All right. So, uh, heads up, you can have breakfast at any time. The, whatever time you eat it, it's just, it's the first meal of the day. That's just what breakfast is. It's not specifically pancakes or cereal or whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so uh, with that said, uh, I want you guys to know that this week or tomorrow, um, not tomorrow, Friday, we're uh, we're trying to make Friday a fun Friday or like game Friday. I'm actually thinking about going and getting, since we can't like meet together, going and getting um, the Xbox from the church and bringing it to like my house so I can play Xbox 360 or um, for some of you who have Xbox 360 or uh, finding other ways to play games online or stuff like that. Uh, we want to do some more stuff in like in ways to connect with you guys. So if you have any ideas about what that will look like, um, shoot us um, something in the comment section and uh, you know, we can connect. All right. The other thing is that I want to mention 
is on Sundays, right? Sundays, we still do have church. It's similar to what we're doing right now. It's just, it's all online. So uh, on Sunday morning, we have services at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30. They're all streamed at campusbiblechurch.com, or you can get there through the app as well. We want to make sure that we're, we're trying to make Sundays more like family oriented. And so uh, we're pushing families to worship together on Sunday morning. So um, you know you're not doing it corporately, but you could still do it as a group. Right. So tonight we're going to be talking um, a few when I when I was planning for what we we're going to be talking about today. Uh, there was always this idea that we'd be talking about this series that leads up to Easter and Easter is coming up in uh, three weeks, I think. And so what we were going to do was we were actually going to start last week and then we were going to go through the following two weeks. And then the week before Easter, we were going to go through the Easter walkthrough. But all that's changed because Corona messed that up. So um, we are not going through the Easter walkthrough, but we still are going to go through this series uh, that leads into Easter. And it's actually a series that I think is super interesting right now um, because the series is called Undefeated, as I'm sure that you saw in the thumbnail. And today's lesson specifically is uh, about separation being defeated again. I didn't. I didn't plan this. I didn't make this up. I didn't know we were all going to be like separated. And now I'm talking about how separation is defeated. But um, before we get started, the question is: Has anyone ever been separated from something that they really wanted to be a part of? Right? You ever been separated from something that you really, really wanted to be a part of? Now, if I was getting more interaction, I'd ask you guys to make a comment in the comment section. But I don't really see a lot of stuff happening like that. But um, you think about like the things that separate you specifically, like obviously your location can separate you. Like if you are uh, friends with somebody and that person moves or you move, you could be separated from that person and your location would separate you. Sometimes your age separates you from certain things, right? Like if you are um, two years younger or older than one of your friends, once they go to middle school, you're still in elementary or once they go to high school, you're still in middle school. Once they go to college, you're still in high school, whatever the case may be, right? So age could separate you. Obviously a virus can separate us. Us, and that's literally separating us right now. This doggone COVID. Uh, not yet. Um, so those are some things that can separate you. But how do you feel when you're separated? Typically, how do you usually feel? Um, I I would be interested in hearing specifically how you feel. We're gonna have some time to do that tonight in Zoom. So I'm just gonna move forward. Um, again, you could be separated by physical locations. You could be separated by age. You could be separated by like a pandemic virus, obviously, which is what we're all separated by right now. And all of these things can leave us feeling scared. They can leave us feeling lonely. They can feel us feeling um, depressed. They can cause us to do some crazy things. They can cause us to think some crazy things. They can even cause us to watch some crazy things, right? But Long before the coronavirus ever came out, long before uh, people had uh, issues with um, COVID-19, long before this pandemic struck the entire world, everybody, all people have been separated. And that separation caused us to feel upset and confused and depressed and uh, isolated and sometimes scared and sometimes doing some crazy things. And that separation right, is exactly what we're talking about tonight uh, from the biblical perspective. We're going to be talking about how Jesus defeated that separation and humanity's separation specifically from God. So um, if you have your Bibles, you can pull them out to the Gospel of Matthew, right, the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 27, verse 51, Matthew 27, verse 51. I'm going to type it in the comments here, that way if anybody comes late. You can see it. Matthew 27, verse 51. One verse tonight, very short, very sweet, very simple. Uh, Matthew 27, verse 51. It says, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. Okay, so um, again, thinking about um, separation, right? Um, there's this 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 thing in the from from a biblical perspective back in the day, um, our relationship with God was one that was supposed to be like you united. It was supposed to be one that was like really close. We were really tight um, back in the day. Um, or, or, 
uh, back in Genesis, the Bible says like God was walking like with Adam on a regular basis. The Bible says that like he came and talked to like Moses, you know what I'm saying? Like God was like close to like his people. But after sin and the fall of uh, man, which we'll talk about a little bit next week as well, um, there was this separation. Right. And so it says that the curtain of the temple tore in two. So back in the, uh, the book of Exodus, after um, God led the people out of uh, Israel or Egypt, sorry. Um, he asked them to build them this like tabernacle, right? And this tabernacle was essentially, it was like the place where God dwelled amongst the people. And it was, it served as two purposes. One, it like allowed God to be in the presence of the people, but it also didn't allow the people to get too close to God or else they would die. Here's the, here's the, the, the illustration, right? Um, imagine oil and water. Right. If you try to pour oil into water, it can't. The two can't mix together. They can they can be in the same area, um, but they and they can share the same space, but they can't mix together. OK, what what happened once the fall of man happened was there was this clear separation between God and man. So God said, look, I'm going to come and chill with you guys. I'm going to be in your midst, but you can't ever be directly in my presence. So what happened was inside the tabernacle, there were like these there was this curtain and the curtain separated the most holy place and the holy place from like the courtyard so there was a courtyard and there was a holy place and then there was the most holy place and that was the place that um god dwelled and so like there was this understanding of god's presence in that place that could not be mixed with uh, human beings and worshipers could go, they could enter, they could be at on the outside in the courtyard and stuff like that. And, um, but nobody could go inside of like the most holy place. And there was actually one time a year, once a year where the high priest after fasting for a year, after praying for a year on the day of atonement, he was able to go into the most holy place to make sacrifices for God. But get this, right? This place was this place was so holy and and this the the understanding of like god can't be around people because we are not holy anymore was so severe that when the priest went inside of the temple to make sacrifices for all the people right to atone for all of our sins or their sins they would tie a a, a rope around my man's ankle right just in case while he was in there, he had an impure thought or he sinned, he would die instantly. So they would tie a rope around his ankle just in case like something happened while he was in there. We can't send somebody else in there because they're going to die also. If he dies while he's in there, he's going to pull them out. That's how um, That's how much we were separated from God. Okay. Like, like it was just clear, like this curtain was, it wasn't, it didn't do anything other than like, it was just this clear symbol slash illustration of like us not being able to get to God. And the, 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 the thing is think about, um, you know, you can, you can look at it as like, think about somebody who you would want to be close to think about people who you want to be close to right now. Like, obviously there's this like virus that separates us, right. Or the, the threat of a virus that separates us. Right. But think about like somebody else who you might want to be close to. I think about like, you know, somebody, um, um, like one of my favorite celebrities, for example, think about your favorite celebrity. I think about Denzel Washington, you know, um, he's a cool guy. I think that he might be fun to hang out with. I would love to sit down and grab coffee with him or chill with him one day. Right. But I can't, I can't. Why? Because we are, he and I are separate from each other. And it's not, um, it's not specifically because, um, of like anything, but, who he is and who I am that separates us, right? If I was someone different, if I was a different person, if I could do anything differently, then I might be able to, but there's something that separates us, okay? The point is that because of who God is and because of who we are, we are separate from him and have always been separate from him since the beginning of time, except on this, like in this, like one occasion. Okay. The Bible says, and again, in, um, in Matthew that the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Okay. So again, the, the curtain of the temple was what separated the most holy place, uh, from the outer chamber where the priests, um, were able to serve like daily and all these things, right? It represents God's unapproachable holiness. And since the high priest is the only person that could pass through on the day of atonement, um, there was no other way to get there. Right. But the Bible says the curtain of the temple was torn in two. So it, I, I was just watching this movie, um, Abduction, with the dude from, um, 
uh, what's what's that movie? Twilight, the the werewolf dude. I can't remember his name. I think it's Jacob. Anyway, um, uh, in the movie, there's this girl. She has this uh, this boyfriend, and she's in. Uh, she's got a picture of her and her boyfriend on like the wall, like on like her like wall, and her and her boyfriend. Obviously, they break up. So she gets she takes the picture and she rips the picture in half, right? But she doesn't just like she doesn't just take the paper. And like, she doesn't just like rip it a little bit and like throw it to the side, right? She takes it and she, and she, right? Rips it in two from top to bottom is what the Bible says about this curtain. She rips it in two from top to bottom. Okay. What is that a symbol of? It's a symbol that this thing that was intact, that was like supposed to be doing something is now completely broken. When the girl did it in the movie, it was a symbol of her relationship that is completely broken and it's not getting put back together. You could probably glue the picture back together with tape, but that's not the point. The point is that if it gets ripped a little bit at the top, maybe like it still functions, right? But if you rip it from top to bottom, it's completely gone. What does that mean? I'm saying that the, the separation that separated God from his people has been completely torn. It's been uh, ripped from into from top to bottom, essentially saying that heaven has been opened through the royal priesthood of Jesus. So Jesus is our high priest. And on that day on the cross, when he died, this is this is actually what's happening here. It's, it's uh, on the day of uh, that Friday afternoon when Jesus was crucified, once like he died, the Bible says that like the earth like uh, lost light for hours and then like the, the rock started to shake and then the, the veil of the temple was what we're talking about right here was torn into. All of that happened when Jesus died, right? It's through Jesus's death that God himself actually creates access for us into his presence, Right. Jesus dying means that like now we can be close to God, which was formerly, again, uh, only um, his presence was only in like the holy, holy place. Right. It was it was limited. Basically, not I wouldn't say limited. God is uh, omnipresent. He can be everywhere. Right. But the only place that we could be with God was in the holy, holy place. That was the only place we could even go see him. We could go visit him. We can go talk to him and we couldn't even go there at all. Like the only person that could go there once a year was a high priest. Now, uh, because of that has been uh, done away with because of what Jesus did on the cross, separation from God has been completely defeated. Jesus begun to become like the true end time temple, like his body itself was our temple and uh, his death is like what atoned for our sins. So again, like what was happening in that place was like there was a priest that was going in to atone for the people's sins. That's exactly what Jesus' death did. And that's why um, the his death is um, a sign of the separation that we have that has been defeated. And the, the veil of the temple being torn in two is this uh, opportunity for us now to no longer be separated from God, but to be completely united with him, to be able to experience his presence, to be able to experience his goodness, to be able to experience everything um, that he has for us because of what Jesus did, right? So Jesus is, God is uh, undefeated. And we're going to be exploring this idea and understanding of like what it means to be uh, undefeated, right? But there, there are some times where we have been defeated, like as individuals. I don't even know where you're at right now. You might feel defeated even now. You may feel like like what we're going through. Somebody told me even the other day, like, you know, where's God in all this? Like in the coronavirus, like, psh- I ain't driven about no coronavirus. Like God is undefeated, right? But sometimes we may not feel like that. We may not feel that we have victory. The Bible tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus. But sometimes, again, you might not feel like you've got victory in him. Have you ever been defeated? Maybe, I imagine. By what? I don't know. How did it make you feel? Probably doubtful, probably shameful, probably like a failure. But I say this all the time. Just because you lose doesn't make you a loser. Just because you quit doesn't make you a, uh, I mean, just because you fail doesn't make you a failure, right? Being, taking an L is not, uh, 
is not a bad thing. It's not a, the worst thing that can happen to you. It's a part of life. But luckily, we have a savior who is undefeated in everything that he's ever done. Never took an L. Never took a loss. Always got the dubs. Undefeated. The Bible says in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace, and in this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. That's Jesus saying that oh, I overcame everything, all of it, undefeated, right? So you can be of good cheer, even though you might go through some difficulty, even though you might experience some challenges. There's hope, there's assurance, and there's uh, uh, victory in Jesus' name. And that is what we have to hold on to during these times, even when we feel defeated, even when we feel separated, even when we feel isolated. All right. So, guys, that's uh, my time for the lesson tonight. I want to pray for us. And then I'm going to give you some instructions about how we can meet together for our small groups right after that. Father God, we thank you so much for your word, which gives light and understanding to us who are simple. We thank you, God, that we get a chance to experience your presence because of your son, Jesus, because of what he did on the cross for us, because of the victory that he had over separation. We are so grateful that that veil that separated you from us has been torn in two, that has been completely torn from top to bottom, and that we now have ex access to the author and the creator of life. We are grateful, Lord, um, that we understand that even though uh, we will experience challenging times, even though we're going through even a difficult time right now with COVID-19, um, God, you told us that regardless of what we experience in the world you overcame it so we can take heart and we can be of good cheer. We can be joyful um, in what we're going through, knowing, again, that you ultimately have victory over everything and we get victory in you because it belongs to you. So thank you, God, for that reminder. Uh, we pray that we would continue to be able to um, encourage one another, build one another up, uh, reach out uh, to connect if we have any needs or anything like that. Um, and we ask that you would just continue to um, show us what your will is for our lives uh, each and every day. God, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So um, that is it. That is our time. I am going to, let's see if I can do this here. I'm going to, we, so we're um, going to be meeting for like small groups so I could see all of your faces um, uh, in about 30 minutes, 25 minutes. So at 730, we've got a Zoom call. Um, if you don't know what Zoom is, it's a video conferencing um, app. You can do it just by calling in. You don't actually have to have like a video. So if you just have a phone, you can do it um, just by your phone or you can download the app. You can use your phone. If you've got a computer, you can use your computer. Um, if you have a, um, I think if you have an Xbox, you can do it on the Xbox. I can't remember. Celine told me one of those things that she has. But anyway, the point is that um, there's multiple ways to do it. I'm going to try to put the link in the description right here. Um, and then, uh, but I sent it to, uh, all of your parents, um, in a text earlier, so they should all have it as well. So, um, that's it. So, um, get ready to jump on in 25 minutes onto our zoom call. I'm actually going to go get on, uh, probably I'm going to grab some water and go get on right now to make sure that I don't have the same technological issues that I had earlier. But let me put that in here. For a second, and then I will see you over there. Of course. There we go. Um. You know what? How about this? I think that I will put it in the uh, description because I'm having a hard time. Having a hard time with this uh, link. All right. So um, you should all have it, but I'll put it in the description. All right. So.
Yes.